Okay, we should be recording now. So the reason we're gonna, first thing is we're gonna send the link to this morning recording call. I don't know how many of you have seen it, how many haven't yet. It was an incredible, incredible, incredible call. I mean, it's outstanding and we'll get to that in a moment. But for those of you who don't know me, my name is Avinash Nagama from London, UK, born and raised in Mauritius. And I moved to London at the age of 18. I've been in the Forex, in the trading, in the crypto space for a very long time and fairly new to network marketing, but blessed with incredible people around me, like many of them on this call. And we've been able to do some really amazing things in a short space of time. Uh, I'm seeing some messages. I'm gonna keep an eye on the messages. If anyone has questions, please wait till the end because if it's a question, we, we may be covering that during this call, but if it's also a question that's already been answered on this call, this morning's call or previous call, that means you missed the call. I will not answer those questions because you can go back to those they were recording. The link has just been posted of this morning's call, right? So you will get the answers to questions that we miss on those calls because we don't wanna waste people time, people who's been on those calls, it would be unfair to them. Now, I was, I got to know about Daisy towards the end of last year. And Daisy is a smart contract concept, something very unique that hasn't been done before in the way that Daisy is. Yes, there are other smart contracts there, but they never had what Daisy have when it comes to the trading aspect. So putting together such a smart contract, and most of you have heard me say this, in a smart contract, it's not like XYZ company that you know of, that you just create a website. If there's any challenges, you go and change it, right? A smart contract has to be perfectly written, perfectly coded before it launches. And as a result, I remember around December time, initially there was a couple of potential dates to launch in December for the beta launch, the initial beta launch. And that didn't happen. It got pushed to 4th of January. Uh, and eventually our beta launch started on the 11th of January. Now, I want to talk to you about what people did in that period of time. There was two types of people. There was two types of people. And right now, there's two types of people. It's always the same. Back then, some people were like, wow, yes, that's amazing because we get more time to talk to more people, do more calls, and get our people ready for the beta launch. While some people... Every time, two or three times the date moved. I'm not going to hide anything. Every time it moved, it was a question. Now, there's a difference when someone is seeking answers so they know how to apply themselves, how to manage and lead their team. And then there's a difference when someone is just asking questions from a negative perspective. Now you will, I don't know which one of those two you are. You do, because here's the thing. The negative one is like this. Oh, why is it delayed? Why is it delayed again? When is it going to launch? Is everything okay? Well, hold on a second. If you are doubtful everything is not okay, why do you even want it to launch? Why do you want to know? It's got to be one or the other. So I had, and I'm sure like you, you had to deal with people saying, why is it delayed? Why is it delayed again? Why they can't launch it now? Well, because they were making sure the smart contract works. And check what happens. On the 11th of January, Daisy had their beta launch. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be candid with you, especially even if you're here for the first time. It's up to you how you interpret this. In the first 10 minutes, the website crashed. In the four or five days that it, it was open for the beta launch, people had to try registering at least five to 10 times 
to be able to get registered. And each time they try to upgrade to another tier, again, they had to try five to 10 times. Why? Well, because the smart contract worked perfectly, but there was two challenges. One, the back office crashed because the servers could not handle the amount of people trying to register. And second, due to the number of transaction, each smart contract transaction has to create. So every time someone registered or upgraded to a new tier, the number of transactions that had to be processed from that one was creating a timeout error and increasing the fees on the blockchain. Daisy co-founders, creators had two cho choices. Let it carry on as it is. A very tedious process. Allow people to lose money, I would say, in a lot of fees or decide to come with a solution. And they said, hey, this was the beta launch. That's great. So we're going to come a solution for the grand launch. Now, I'm going to admit everyone thought, okay, maybe a few weeks, two weeks, three weeks, and it has been four weeks. And many of you have been saying, when is it launching? And today, for the first time, I'm going to give you an answer to that which you haven't got for the last couple of weeks. The simple reason we're not being given a fixed date is because if we did give a fixed date right now, if the founders of and the creators of Daisy gave us a fixed date, guess what would happen? Let's say they said uh, 22nd of February, which is Monday. This is technology we're talking about. When the testing is done, and if they find anything that needs to be adjusted, improved, or changed, what do they do? Do they launch with the challenge, or do they wait to make it perfect? Because no matter what they do, if they decide to delay it, here's what some of you are going to say. Oh, my God, why is it delayed again? What's wrong? Is something wrong? And if they launch and you have the challenge, you're going to say, why did they launch if they were not ready? Because that's exactly what some people say. Because when we did do the beta launch on the uh, 11th of January and had some challenges with the system, some people said, why did we launch if we're not ready? And the funny thing is, most of those were the same people who were complaining, why is it delayed? You know, my mentor once said, how you do anything is how you do everything. How you do anything is how you do everything. The person that's going to complain is going to complain because that's all they know how to do. When it's delayed, why is it delayed? When it's launched, why did they launch if it wasn't ready? Why didn't they delay further? Well, they didn't delay further because you would have been complaining as opposed to leading the way for the people that are willing to follow you, for your team. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not here to defend the company. I am not happy that we didn't, we're not given a timeline. But I will give you a timeline that I think it's going to launch today. And that's based on my assessment of everything that's happening. That's based on my conversation with the top leaders as well as the co-creators. I believe we will launch any time between the 25th to the 4th of March. Now, could it be before that? Yes. Could it be after that? Absolutely. But I'm telling you this because here's the two types of mindset. There's some people here. I was on a call a few days ago with, with about 40, 50 people, a new group of people that's joining us, you know, and they were fired up and they're so happy that they've got extra time. They've already got about 200 people ready. Yesterday, I was on a call with a group of people that's got about 1,100 people ready to go. And guess what they say? They didn't ask me when it's launching. I said, hey, as soon as we know when it's going to launch, we will let you know. They said, just keep telling us it's delayed. I go, what do you mean? He goes, we want to go and help as many people become pace at the goal and pace at the leadership. 
Now, every lead I've spoken to so far, here's what they say. I say, what is your short-term goal with Daisy? I want to hit pace, set a goal in 30 days. Well, someone gave me that answer three weeks ago. Today, the answer is the same. I'm like, what do you mean? They go, when we start, I want to hit pace at the goal in the first 30 days. But I go, but you already had three weeks. What have you been doing? They go, but we haven't launched yet. If you've made a decision, your launch has started. You should be making the most of that time. And it brings me back to exactly the same position that we have two types of people. The ones that are seeking answers so they can better pave the way, they can better lead the way and make the most of the time that they have, whether they have one day, one week or one month before the launch. They wanna know because they wanna maximize from it. The second type of people, they wanna know because they wanna find something to complain about. Oh, it's delayed? Why is it delayed? Oh my God. Oh, we're launching? Is it perfect? Are you sure it's perfect? Can you give me a guarantee? It launches, there's a challenge. Why did you launch? How you do anything is how you do everything. And I want to share a little story with you. A story of back in the days, how a journalist who was a struggling journalist ended up becoming one of the most famous journalists in the whole world. And here's what happened. She, she was struggling. She was really struggling to catch the highlight, to make it on the front page, to catch a good story. And here's the thing, for any of you who know that industry, that world, it's almost a catch-22. If you are not already seen as a top journalist, you don't even get to go after the big stories. Excuse my French, where they give you the shitty stories to go after. So how are you meant to even make it on the front page? Well, here's what happened. One day, she got an assignment on homelessness. So she went out, met with a few homeless people and started asking their story. But one of them stood out really, really well because he met this homeless person who was, you know, at their prime age in their, he thought that, she thought that person must be in the, around their thirties, early thirties, you know, and she was baffled. How could someone like that at that age be a homeless and on top of that, a drunk? You know, it was early morning and that person was drunk. So she did her interview. And one of the key questions was how and why did you end up in this situation, in this position where you don't have a roof you don't have anywhere to live and you have to be on the street. And he said, well, we were a nice, good family of four. And my dad used to drink. He was a drunk. He would drink every day and come home and beat us all, including my mom. And one day we woke up and my mother was just gone. And the journalist was like quite saddened by even just the start of the story, you know? And then he carried on saying, well, eventually my dad took money against the house just to be able to carry on feeding his habits of drinking. And eventually we lost the house. We all ended up on the street and I don't even know where anyone in my family are. I don't even know if my dad is alive let alone my mom. And because of the emotional side, that story gave her a little bit of exposure. And she went from a bottom of the list journalist, nowhere near the top, but you know, she climbed up a little bit. So they started giving her a few like better stories to go after. And a few months down the line, she happened to 
meet a group of people within the business arena that she was interviewing, very low level, small, medium businesses. And a few of them had one thing in common. It was one top businessman that helped them, all of them. And she decided to pursue her story further that she needed to try and get an interview with that person. And she managed to arrange it. And when she walked through the office and opened the door when she was greeted, she was a bit taken aback. Because it was a familiar face. She thought that's someone I know I've met before. But she hadn't. It wasn't until she went through the story that she realized where her assumption that she's met this person came from. Because this person had a very, very similar story to the person who was homeless. This person also grew up in an environment with a drunk, abusive father. The mom ran away and one day they ended up on the street. But she couldn't help at the end asking him the question, apologizing first saying, look, I'm really sorry to ask you this, but I have to, because when I walked in here, I was so shocked when I saw you because you look so familiar. And after hearing your story, I just wanna ask you this. Did you have a twin brother named XYZ? And the person was shocked, was like, how do you know? Yes, that's my brother, but we got lost when we lost our house. See, that homeless person on the street and this top influential and affluent businessman were twin brothers that grew up in the same house with the same parents, with the same drunk and abusive father, getting the same abuse every day. Do you know what the homeless last answer was to the question, why would you say the reason you ended up here? His answer was my dad. Guess what the answer was of the businessman? The same answer, my dad. The only difference is the homeless person said, the reason I'm here sitting on the street, drinking, homeless, is because my dad was a drunk addict and I couldn't become anything else. After following, seeing him drink every day, being exposed to it every day, being abused every day, that was my only option. The twin brother who became a superstar in the business world said, the reason I am who I am today is because of my dad. It's because when I saw him do what he does, and ruin our family, I wanted to make sure I become the opposite so I can help people who find themselves in those situations and get them out of those problems. I didn't want to end up like my dad. You see, they both grew up in the exact same environment, in the same house. In the palm of their hand, they had the same situation. but they reacted differently to it because of the way they think. And one ended up on the street and the other ended up a multimillionaire. Now that story made that journalist really famous. But we're not interested in the journalists here. What we're interested is, in is really what are you going to choose to do because you see you're right if you say man why we haven't launched yet i wish we had launched yet so do i i wish we had already launched you're right to say you know what i wish they'd give us a date that we can launch you think like that rightfully so because you're thinking from a positive perspective that you want to know when we're launching so you can maximize before then. But the challenge is there's too many other people that don't think like that. They are asking a question so they can make a negative statement. 
that's the reason the company didn't give a date. But for those of you who've watched this morning's call, or if you haven't, please make sure the link has been posted on this chat. Watch that call because Dr. Anna Becker shared the white paper. Dr. Anna Becker also shared some live, not just screenshots, she actually logged into one of the Binance account. I believe it was Binance just thinking now to show the funds to show how the funds are distributed, to show how the trading is working, what's the plan and how's the development of the DAISY AI project going. I've got to be honest with you, I have never ever seen a company or project that has offered that much transparency. I know some people are full-time networkers. You are planning on Daisy being your full-time income. And hey, I'm not here to tell you otherwise. I always believe, you know, as having multiple streams of income, but you have to start somewhere. So I know I have some people who message me saying, man, I was really relying on this as making my income for, for the next, you know, whatever time. And I can understand their frustration. But we can't change that. You see, the, the pain, the pain of waiting, the pain of a launch being delayed is okay compared to the pain of regret. Someone could walk away. Someone could say, hey, I was planning to join Daisy. They've, they haven't told us when they're launching. It's been delayed. You know what, I'm going to go and do something else. That's up to you. That is the freedom that you have. That is the beauty of our industry because you have that freedom. But let me ask you this. When you had decided, whether you're already in the business or new here, when you had decided that Daisy was a good project for you, what did you make the decision on? In what order of priority and hierarchy did you make a decision? I believe we all have a checklist. Even if you don't write it down, we all have a mental checklist. Normally the first thing is for some people, well, who is running the company? Who is trading for them? How transparent are they? What experience do they have in trading? Do they show the transparency of that? And in this case, Endotech, I don't think it can get any better. You know, who are the leaders at the top? Who has invited me to this company? What, what can I do with this company? How much can I make? What can I build? If anyone had a deciding factor as being when does it launch? And if you had it, if it was at the top, I can understand you shouldn't be here because that for you was the priority. And I'm gonna slow down a little bit further. I've just realized, I just, yeah, I thought so. I just saw a message that because it's being translated, this call is being translated in different languages. So I wanna give a shout out to all those leaders that took on the responsibility to do the translation. Uh, you know, we sometimes forget how hard it is for people to be translating especially when that is not what they do for a living they are a leader that's that are bilingual and they decided to translate the course so uh, thank you very much we want to let you know that we really appreciate you and i'm going to do my best to slow down i'd get carried away uh, but i will do my best to slow down so once again what was your checklist was the very first oh because it's launching on the 11th of January or 11th of February or 11th of March, was that your first tick? Was that the priority in you deciding that you're going to join Daisy? No? Well, what was the first one? Whatever it may be for you. Let's say for me, it was, hey, I know some, I know the creators, the co-creators, they're good people. Has that changed? No. I'm going to go through my checklist. And what I'm trying to say here, you need to go through your checklist. And if the first 
point in your checklist would have been when are they launching that is the main criteria that helps you make a decision then feel free to leave the call i don't want to waste your time you can deal with your pain of regret later but i'm not going to let your mindset affect what i do i won't the reason for this call is to give you some of the updates. If you've been on every call, you already have 90% of the updates. The purpose of this call is for me to pick up who are the next 15 pace at the goal, because from next week, Monday, whether anyone likes it or not, Avi is getting on with presentations every day. Because I'm launching on Monday as if for the first time I'm joining Daisy and I'm gonna go pace at the leadership again before Daisy even launches. Well, you have the same opportunity. I don't know. Someday a journalist might tell us whether you decided because of the same reason of having more time before it launches to make something out of it or to make an excuse out of it. That is a decision that you have to make. You see, my next one on the list for me was the challenges I've had in network marketing, where I remember being in a company doing 150 plus million in turnover, bang, overnight, the CEO changed the compensation plan. We've seen people move organization from one place to the other. We've seen people slot in people above you, even when they came after you. That was my next point for me in criteria. When I found out it was a smart contract, I was like, wow, that means all that can't happen. That thing that made me like really lose heart in my first real crypto network marketing company, that can't happen here. That was my second checklist. The next thing in my checklist was who's going to do the trading? Who are your traders? How many years experience you have? And I truly expected it to be a three months old company, a six months old company, like I've seen before. I expected them to say, we'll give you half a percent every day. When they told me the minute they said the name Endotech, I knew and I heard of the company before. I didn't know much. In fact, I heard of the company before. And when I started doing my research and I found out they trade for investors, institutional investors, when I found out they trade for existing companies and I was able to trace some of those companies and a couple of those investors, that was a big tick for me. Guess what? Has that changed today? No. In fact, today, this morning's call was even more proof, transparency in how strong. So far, I, I can't predict the future. I haven't seen the future. So far, yes, we know the past of Endotech. So far, they're maintaining that same track record here in Daisy. Has that changed? No. So the question is, why did you choose you want to be part of Daisy, whether you're already in Daisy or you're waiting to get started. Why did you choose to be part of Daisy? What was your checklist? Has any of those changed? The creators are the same. Dr. Anna is the same. Endotech is the same. The trading is the same. The smart contract works, except they had to make changes. And here's how the change went. I believe Jeremy and Endotech really believed that we would have launched about two weeks ago. We were told that, but we were told not to tell the field in case there's a delay and I'm glad we did not. Here's why. So the one smart contract had to be broken down into three separate components. 
because the leadership pay setter and the leadership goal and the leadership uh, bonus pay setter leadership, I should say, was being distributed to so many people, which is great news. That means there's so many people that were able to qualify for pay setter goal in the first four days. But that was creating so many micro transactions on each payment that comes through into the smart contract that it was creating a timeout error. And it was increasing the fees for people. And we don't want you to pay higher fees. We don't want your people to pay higher fees. So as a result, they broke it down to three smart contracts, done the test, and everything was working perfectly. And then they had to do an audit with numbers, a stress test. And when they did that, they found out although we'll be okay now, as we grow, and when I talk of growth, you gotta remember, in four days, 55,000 people registered in four days. And we'll be okay now. But as we grow, we're gonna encounter a similar problem somewhere down the line. So what they decided to do is break it down into five smart contracts. And at the same time, use that time frame that we're gonna need anyway to spread it into five smart contracts to do all the testing. They decided at the same time to onboard everything they need so that when it's time for phase two, there's no stopping. There's not even a slowdown because for those of you who are on this call, I'm gonna take the liberty of assuming you already know that phase one is huge. Phase one is huge. We're talking about crypto and crypto trading as part of this crowdfunding model. As much as me coming from a Forex background, moving to a crypto background, my favorite industry is crypto. Do you know how much in the Forex world is traded every day? Crypto is approaching or may have, I don't know, may have exceeded, I don't know, the two trillion market capitalization. Forex is a $6.6 .6 trillion per day volume of trading. That is our phase two. Can you imagine what would happen then? For someone who's really looking at this project for the long term, you should be excited that when we're ready for phase two, the system is also ready. So right now they've had to break it down into five smart contract components, which means more testing. Now it's not just individual testing, but you having to test how they communicate with each other, making sure that that works and then have the audit. But this morning, Edward, again, for those who are on the call will know, one of the co-creators of the DAISY project has announced that next week they will have some hard information for us meaning what that means is they will possibly have a date to tell us early next week now we will be seeing a lot more of jeremy as well from next week he has been neck deep if not deeper working with the developers night and day to try and get this ready to go and he's actually going to dubai along with edward and Ilya for two weeks for two main reasons primarily to be in the same time zone as the developers because right now i don't think he can tell a part day and night and at the same time because he would have liked that's why i said between the 25th and the 4th because he would have liked to launch it whilst he is in USA, uh, in sorry, in Dubai, to actually launch the project. So that is your technical side of update. What is happening with the smart contracts? Why it is being delayed? But like I said, this was just not just an update call. It's an update and a training call at the same time. Because I want to now talk. Hey, listen. If you were here, by the way, and I'm sure we're going to see the numbers drop after I say this, and that's okay. 
you know, I learned a long time. You're the average of the people you surround yourself by. So I know some people are going to drop after what I say next. And I'm grateful that you're going to drop out yourself. Because there's some people who are just here wanting to hear that, hey, we're launching tomorrow. And tomorrow, if we don't launch, they'll complain. And tomorrow, if we launch, they'll still find something to complain about. So now the next part of this call, I won't take long, maybe 10, 15 minutes. I want to talk about strategies. What do, do you need? What do people need? What do you need from me? How can I help you go to the level you want to go to? But that's only available for people who think when they're asking a question is so they can position themselves stronger and strongly to maximize from it. I am not, I do not have time for those who are like, who are looking for a reason to complain. So if you were here looking for a reason to complain, you got the update, right? Please go and rant on Facebook, on Instagram, wherever you want to, but not here. We don't have time for that. If you have a genuine question that would help you be positioned strongly, will help you lead your team, your organization better, make the most of the time. That's what we're going to take the next 10, 15 minutes to go through. So anything that anyone needs that would be helpful to them to building their business, that would, be, that would feel as a support to them to expand their business, you feel free to send a message as a question on the chat and I will go through these. And among those, I'm sure I will cover some topics of train, training at the same time because I'm sure you will uh, have very good questions that we're anticipating. So anyone who have questions, feel free to put it in the chat. And until we have the first question, here's, here's what I'm gonna say. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat myself on this. Imagine someone is saying to you, from three weeks ago, their aim is to go pace at a goal. And I'm sure you have those people in your team. If that person, three weeks later, tell you they're waiting for the launch to go pace set in 30 days again, do not waste your time with them. Do not waste your time with them because they are not making the most of the time right now. You know, for some people, pace setter, goal is easy. For some people, it's not. And I'm not talking about some people being better than others. No. I'm talking different markets. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. In, in Europe, I think going pace setter goal is too easy. But that same opportunity for one of my countrymen in Mauritius, in some places in Asia, in some places in Africa, in some places in Latin America, and in some Western countries. It's not easy because the income level in some countries compared to others is not the same. And that is where you find people in those countries where they earn less, where the average income per person is less, which primarily means People are going to start on the lower tiers. They're loving this additional time because they value the time. They value what that extra time means for them and their team. You know, they always say, things that you have, you always take for granted. And you do not value them until you've lost them. And the funny thing is, you would expect after 18 years, because I'm assuming we, we don't have any under 18 here, after 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, whatever it may be, we would have learned that the most valuable thing in life is time. What's the point of having money if you have no time to, to enjoy it? What's the point of a family if you have no time left? What's the point of anything if you don't have time? Time is the most valuable thing. What we're really running after, everyone, you're not looking for money. You're not looking to make more money. 
Yes, but you're looking to make more money because you want to spend more time with your family. You want to have more time to yourself. You want to have more time to do what you want to do in life rather than leave home at 7.30 in the morning, get back at 7 p.m. just to go and build the dream of someone else. So I would say the biggest lesson from this call, it's high time to start valuing, valuing your time more. So if you think those delays affect you in a negative way, well, value your time and walk away from Daisy. But if you really want to make the most out of this project, then value every second that we have additional up until the day we launch and make it count. Make it count. Some of you on this call know you've worked with me a lot. When I build a business, I treat every day like it's my last opportunity to ever build that business. No procrastination. Have you ever found yourself because you think you have the time saying, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it later. Later doesn't exist. Tomorrow doesn't exist. Okay, so we've got a few questions that I think might have come through. Let's take a look. Danielle, thank you very much for your comment. Much appreciated. Halim, thank you. Uh, Elisa or Elisa, I'm not too sure. Are you making these trainings once or twice a week? Well, we're going to start. So from Monday, from Monday, we're going to have presentations every day. Now, whilst you're on this call, if anyone, English presentations for anyone who want to present the business themselves, please reach out to me and we'll create a schedule. Uh, I will be doing some of those presentations myself. I will pick some of the days and I will let you know when I'm doing those presentations myself as well. And we will tell you who uh, some of the, I'm sure Aki will do some presentations and many others. So let us know if you want to present in English. Uh, and what I will do, Elisa, I will arrange to do at least one training for the whole team uh, each week as well. Okay, and we'll keep you guys posted. Uh, Esther, I could really do with a leaders training session. I'm really game and need to drive my team to excellence. Wonderful, Esther. We did touch base uh, two, three days ago when we, we had a call together. Esther, message me. Let's set a private training call for your team because they haven't joined yet and they haven't been exposed to as much training yet. Let's get them into a training session. Uh, and then the second time they can be within the group training together. So you just message me and we will arrange one for as early as this weekend. Let's not procrastinate. Okay, Eva. Hi, Avi. I have a friend living in Mozambique and they are struggling with TRX purchase in local currency. Any suggestions? Pardon me, second question. The recent TRX fee increase, will it affect the smart contract payout? Okay. So the first part of the question for Mozambique, Eva, message me as well. We need to know what they have access to be able to purchase and what they don't. Now, if they really have no access to purchase any crypto at all, uh, I will work a solution. We will provide you with a solution. TRX fee. TRX fee hasn't really increased. So if you mean the price of TRX has increased, hey, it doesn't affect people. The only people the affect is those who already have their TRX sitting there waiting to purchase their tiers or upgrade. And guess what? Because price is almost doubled, that means someone who had $200 there sitting in their TRX now has $350 with the same amount of TRX, which is brilliant. That's a great way to be affected, which is a positive way. Yes, we'll, we'll provide the... Uh, Copy of this training uh, recording shortly as well, no problem. Are there already Spanish presentations by Robbie? Robbie, I believe there are uh, pr uh, Spanish presentations. We did have daily Spanish presentation by some of our leaders. Uh, reach out to me and I will connect you with those uh, leaders or I will get you the links. I'm sure the calls are still happening even if it's not every day, but from next week, I am anticipating our, we've got Italian, German, Spanish, Hindi, French, 
English webinars. We are all going to start again from Monday because right now it's time to get to work. We're very, very, very close to launching. And guys, if I sit here and tell you that I never have a moment of weakness myself, I'd be lying to you. Do I ever sit there and say, oh man, why is he hasn't launched yet? Yes. Not because I'm trying to be negative, because I can't wait. And I want it to launch. And I also get distracted by people calling left, right, and center. Hey, when are we launching? Hey, why we haven't launched yet? Hey, what's the delay? I want it to launch too. And you know what? Any moment I feel that little moment of weakness, there's one video I watch. The short version of the launch of Daisy video with the actual rocket. And that gets me pumped. Like there's no tomorrow. So from next week, we're back. But from right now, but presentations from Monday, we're back on a new different level. So from this call, who are we looking for? We've, we've lost about 15 people as I expected. And I'm glad they're not here anymore. We're looking for people who want to make the most out of this project. Right. And at the end of this, I'm going to share with you for those, many of you have seen me do it. I want to share with you how I invite people, how I invite the masses into these calls. Okay. Thank you, Ivy Jefferson, for your kind message. Very good question by Daniel. Um, Daniel asks, if I bring English speaking people to your call, how can I be sure they will stay in my line? Daniel, I always, towards the end of my call and multiple people, well, pretty much 90% of people on this call know this. I always cover a topic on that, that people should only go and sign up uh, with the person uh, that, you, for example, if you invite someone on my call, they should sign up with you. I always say that. I always tell people who have been invited on the course to go back to the person who invited them and get the link from them. I actually cover a little bit on that. Uh, reach out to your upline. I'm sure whoever is your upline knows me. They will know, they will tell you that I am very, very uh, specific and strict on that. Elisa, is the link always the same for your presentations? No, today's one was a different one, but what we'll do, the one we'll create next week, we'll have two links because we normally have one morning presentation, one evening presentation, and we're gonna have one fixed one for the mornings. The presentation runs on weekdays because we leave weekend open for any specific topic we want to cover. And the evening one would be one link, which is every day for the evening. So technically it'd be a repeated link, but the morning and the evening ones may be different, okay? Super, that brings us to the end of the questions from the looks of it. So I'm going to, for those of you I'm assuming if you're here, you're ready. You're ready not to join Daisy. You're not ready for the relaunch. Of the, you're ready to launch your business. So here's what you need to do. You need to make a list of people. You know who goes in the list? You pick up your phone, you go to your contact list, and you put in every single person on that list on a piece of paper. Yeah. Every And look, I can't tell you what to do. This is not a job. I'm telling you what I did. I'm telling you what I do, and I'm telling you what I am going to do. Now, it's your choice whether you want to duplicate that or not, because in my first four months in network marketing, my success was zero. And I mean zero. I did not have a single person join my team. The next four months, I went from zero to hitting the rank of diamond. And that was because... The one thing that changed, I realized I needed to be coachable. I needed to duplicate the things that people who are at the level I want to get to were doing. I needed to duplicate that the people that were at the level I wanted to get to had done and were still doing. And that's how I learned to do that. I learned to launch a business. I do not ever join a business. And as a matter of fact, Put in a message, if you would like, look, and I don't say this about me because it's never been about me. My success is because of the people I've had around me, the team I've had around me. 
But many people on this call who are part of that team, they know I've, after my first ever trial with four months, no success, I've never joined a business ever. I've always launched. I've always launched. And within the first three to six months in any business, I've been among the top highest rank in the whole company and broken records. If you would like to know how, there's one video, one, one video, a 10 minute video. Don't post the link here anyway, uh, Akib. Let me know in the chat if you would like to know the video. But before you, before you put that, if you would like to know what that video is, but the question is, are you prepared to do what I did? Because what I did, two things. I watched that video every single day for the last four years. I still do till today. Every day I watch that video. And the second thing that I did is I apply. I did exactly that. Whenever I had to launch or relaunch my business, I just went bang, I launched. And to launch your business, this is what you need to do. We will share the link. So what I will do is I will upload that video onto the YouTube channel, uh, the same YouTube channel that was posted earlier. You should subscribe to that because you will get all the updates. Once you make that list, it takes a quick phone call. Here's my phone call. You see Akib here. Whatever relationship I have with the person I'm calling, I would maintain the same thing. So if Akib is a friend that I just know like recently, hey Akib, how are you? Whatever usual conversation will be the same. If Akib is a close friend, I'm talking to Akib, hey, how's it going? How, how is work? How's the family? If that's the conversation I normally have with him, I will have the same conversation. But at the end of my normal conversation, this is what I will do. And some of you will say, why do you have to say that first part? It's the most important part. I'd be, Akim, do you, are you totally free at the moment? Could I have your 100% attention for two minutes? If Akib goes to me, well, yeah, I, I'm just watching TV. I can talk to you. Or I'm just, you know, I don't know. I'm just doing the dishes. I can talk to you. I'm just cooking. I'd be like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. This is extremely serious topic that I want to talk to you about. Let me know when you're totally free for me to talk to you. Now, if any of you is wondering, well, why do that? It's your friend, or your close friend. Exactly why? Because you've never spoken to them like that. You have to edify your business at every opportunity. Edification is the most important part of this business. You have to let that person know, no matter how close they are, even if you're your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad, you need to let them know how important it is for you. But the thing is, if you haven't made it important, then you can't. So you have to make this business important for you. And you have to let the other person know indirectly how important it is. And now Akib goes to me, well, yeah, I'm free. I'm, I'm totally free. I'm like, great. Akib, let me ask you this. If I had found a way to possibly make some additional money on the side, would you like to know about it? That's it. That's me. That's my script. Guess what? No one till today has said no to me. Who says no to an opportunity to look at making extra money? Do you think if Bill Gates has an opportunity to make more money, he'll say no? Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, no? No one says no to an opportunity to make more money. Guess what happens? You scare them away when you start giving them information. Hey, there's this thing, you know, you can buy Bitcoin, you can put your TRX there, you can recruit people, you lose them, you scare them. Do not give any information. You either show them the whole business plan or you invite them only. You don't call your best friend to invite them for a birthday party and you say, hey, I'm dropping a cake to you. You invite them. You don't tell them what kind of cake, what color cake you're gonna have. You don't tell them what drinks you're gonna serve. You invite them, do exactly that. But what you just did, you just asked them permission indirectly by asking a question that very rarely someone will say no. So they give you permission to invite them. Now, Akib said, well, yes, I would love to know about making additional money. 
edification. Akib, let me ask you this. Are you serious when you say you would really like to know? Are you serious about that? Yes. Okay. Can you clear your schedule at 11 a.m. or 7 p.m. UK time on Monday to join me on a Zoom call? Akib says, oh, I'm not sure if I can. Akib, let me ask you this. Were you really serious when you said you would like to know about this opportunity to make additional money? Does what you have going on at those times more important than this? Because it could be. It could be a family matter. I don't know. And very often they go, no, no, no. You know what? I can change it. I'd be on the call. Or they say, you know what? I can't get out of that. Is there another day? That's okay. Because again, I have to edify my business. Before the person come on the call, they should already know in their head, wow, I'm expecting something wow because you've already done half of the job. And when Akib says, yeah, no problem. Now the next part is your choice, but this is what I do. Akib, I cannot guarantee that you'll qualify to work with the people I'm working with, but I need you to show you're serious. So can you jump on the Zoom five minutes before it starts and message me to let me know you are on? And if ever anything changes, because I have limited numbers, can you please let me know so I can go ahead and replace you because I've got so many other people I need to speak to. No one likes to be replaced. No one likes to be replaced. So what I've just done, I've asked permission, I've invited, but throughout this process, I've edified, I've made the person understand how important this opportunity is to me to me. And guess what? They come on the call, they watch the presentation, and all you have to do is find out from them whether they want to be part of your organization or not. And you move on to the next one, and to the next one, and to the next one. But guess what? The minute one of them says yes, guess what you do? You do a launch with them. You do the same thing. You say, okay, hey, let me show you what I did. You say, hey, I've already got three people in my team. I've already got seven. 10, 50, 500, 5,000. And I go, would you like to know how I did it? They go, yeah. I go, okay. Can you make a list of everyone you have in your phone? Yes, I can do that. All right, do that. Let me know when you're done, how many hours you need, or by tomorrow, I'll call you. I'll tell you what to do next. You walk them step by step. That's what we call duplication. Edification plus duplication is called to success. Okay. So I'm just gonna check if there's any other questions. Otherwise we will wrap up, we'll call it a day. Uh, from Monday, we're gonna start these presentations. By tomorrow, all the links will be sent. Uh, and I can't wait. I can't wait for all of us to pack these calls. Uh, sorry, I missed the link to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Akib, can you just post one of the videos or the YouTube channel, our YouTube channel link here again for Sybil so they can uh, subscribe to that. Where Paris, uh, Paris asks a question. What's the procedure if an investor decides to withdraw his investment after two weeks next? They can't do that. So they have to understand that they can withdraw the profits, but until the end of the phase one, they can't withdraw their capital. So if they are looking for an opportunity where they may need that capital back at any time, they should not be part of DAISY. There are other opportunities out there which is not as fruitful, I would say, as I've seen as Daisy, but it leaves you more in control of your capital. But you might make, I don't know, 5% a month or even less. But there are opportunities out there. So then Daisy is not an opportunity for them. Or they should put a smaller amount that they would not possibly need after two weeks or two months. Okay. Uh, Eliza, where I get the 10-minute video? I will post the 10-minute video, if not tonight, by tomorrow. I just need to pull it out and just make sure check with all the copyright. I will post that on our YouTube uh, channel uh, by, by tomorrow latest. Okay. Super, super, super. Well, thank you very much, everyone. And it was a great call. A lot of you on the call. A lot of you stayed on till the end. Uh, and I look forward. Here's the link that's just come through. We look forward to seeing you and your guests. Start making your list. You've got the weekend to start inviting, start making that list and let's get inviting. Let's pack those calls from next week. We're going to do these calls every day. So thank you very much. Have a great, great weekend ahead. Uh, 
crypto price is so bullish. It's crazy. It's amazing how the price of crypto is going up. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Thank you very much. Take care.